Hi, my name is Laura Whitburn and I teach anatomy at the Bundura campus. In this segment, we're going to look at the osteology and joints of the pectoral girdle. Here we can see the pectoral girdle in motion, whilst the glenohumeral joint is flexing and extending. We can see that the girdle is made up of two bones, a long skinny clavicle and a large flat triangular scapula. And they, are, they articulate with one another at the joint called the acromioclavicular joint, or AC joint. The whole girdle moves in relation to the axial skeleton at the sternoclavicular joint. But we often observe this movement by looking at the scapulothoracic joint, a functional joint located between the scapula and the posterior thoracic cage. Here are the bones of the pectoral girdle. The clavicle is long, skinny and slightly S-shaped. Its medial end is quite round and will articulate with the manubrium of the sternum. Its lateral end is quite flat and will articulate with the acromion of the scapula. One way to help to work out whether this is the anterior or posterior aspect of the clavicle is to find at its distal end this bump. This bump is called the conoid tubicle. And this bump will face posteriorly. Therefore, we know that this is the posterior aspect. Here we can articulate it now with the scapula. The scapula is large, flat and triangular. There's a lot of space or surface area for muscle attachment. Being triangular, it will have three sides or borders a medial side, or medial border, lateral border, and a superior border. It also has three angles or points, an inferior angle, a superior angle, and a lateral angle. It's here at the lateral angle that we find the glenoid fossa, where the head of the humerus will articulate. Looking posteriorly at the scapula, we see the spine. And it's at the lateral end of the spine that we find the acromion process. This process creates a roof above the head of the humerus. Excellent. Here we can see the bones on the skeleton. We can see the clavicle and the scapula behind. The clavicle, because of its shape, acts like a strut or a crane-like strut, which helps to suspend the scapula and the upper limb bones away from the trunk, giving them maximum freedom of movement. It also creates a passageway for important neurovascular structures to travel from the neck into the upper limb region. The clavicle and the scapula we can see articulating at the acromioclavicular joint. Movement of the girdle at the sternoclavicular joint can occur in all three planes. And this movement is realised at the functional scapulothoracic joint. The important implication of this mobility of the girdle is that it allows us to change the position of the glenoid fossa, thereby enhancing the overall available range of movement of the glenohumeral joint. So to summarise the features of the pectoral girdle, it consists of the clavicle, which acts to attach the girdle to the axial skeleton at the sternoclavicular joint. It also supports the upper limb away from the trunk by acting as a strut. And it also creates a space below the shoulder, known as the axilla, which helps to protect the axillary contents. The scapula acts to attach the upper limb to the girdle at the glenohumeral joint. It also provides a lot of space for muscle attachment. The clavicle and the scapula articulate with one another at the acromioclavicular joint and this allows a little bit of extra mobility or give um, within the girdle itself. And movements of the girdle 
in relation to the axial skeleton are realised at the scapulothoracic joint.